I have an RTX 2070, and it's now just the beginning of 2021, and I've been thinking really hard with the new R uh, RTX 30 series cards and AMD's 6000 series cards out. Should I be trying to find one in stock for a reasonable price to upgrade my 2070? Or is the 2070 still gonna be just fine for another year? And then make it to the next GPU generation. I've managed to make my decision and I'm gonna help you guys uh, by going through my same thought process I used to make my decision. In other words, is an RTX 2070 still good enough to get us through 2021? This, this test is, by the way, gonna be focusing on 1440p. And I think if you're on a 1080p monitor, you're most likely gonna be just fine with a 2070, unless you like really, really wanna do ultra ray tracing at really high frame rates and not using a lot of DLSS. So this will focus on 1440p. I also think that at 4K, the 2070 is just not quite gonna cut it. I'll do a separate video on ultra wide coming out soon. But at 1440p, that's what I'm focused on. Now, how am I gonna make this decision? Well, I'm gonna be using Cyberpunk 2077 to make this decision. Not because it's the only game um, that, that matters, but because I'm looking for a way to predict what what's like the worst case scenario for graphically demanding AAA games coming out within the next year, in other words, during 2021. And obviously nobody can predict the future, but Cyberpunk is one of the most graphically demanding games we've seen, and it also features all of the main technologies we might wanna think about. That includes ray tracing, it includes DLSS, and it also just includes, in general, um, high-level DX12 uh, um, uh, graphical features, and all of that. So in other words, I feel like we, it's safe to use Cyberpunk 2077 as a stand-in for what 2021 games could be. And I, I would imagine many of them will be less demanding this or possibly just better optimized. <laughs> okay, so what are we gonna look at? Uh, currently, um, by the way, take a look at the top left of my screen, which I just reset the benchmarker on there. It's got my GPU usage at 98%, so we can tell that I, when I'm GPU bound and that this is not a CPU bound issue, my CPU is an i5-9600K, if you're curious. Uh, the GPU is a 2070 non-super. It has a slight factory overclock. Uh, the frame rate counters you'll see from left to right are the current frame rate on the left, the average frame rate in the middle, and I can reset that every time, uh, whenever we need to, if I change graphical settings, and on the, f uh, the right side is the 1% lows. All right, so the current settings right now are, again, 1440p. Uh, just to prove it to you guys, we're at 1440p. The graphic settings is at the ultra preset with no ray tracing and no DLSS. So what I'm using this for is basically to simulate it, what if a AAA game similar in demand to Cyberpunk 2077 comes out but does not feature DLSS? How would our RTX 2070 do? Well, I would say that I would not be super happy using this to play ultra settings at 1440p without DLSS. Now I'm not saying it isn't playable, but playable depends on personal preference. So these frame rates, as we can see here, are, and I'm gonna reset the average because I was in the, um, <laughs> in the menu there, which, which threw that off. So I reset the average again, if you're looking at the frame rate counters there. We're in the mid 40s, kind of the low mid 40s uh, for the most part here. Now we're in a fairly demanding section of the game because we're outside um, in an open area with direct sunlight, as well as lots of vehicles and pedestrians. So we're in a fairly demanding area of the game. And again, I don't imagine any games coming out in 2021 being much more demanding than this at their ultra settings without any ray tracing. Okay, so in the mid 40s, this is playable. You could certainly play the game this way, especially if you're using a controller. I just got ran over by a car. <laughs> Uh, distracted pedestrian walking while he's talking. That's what's going on here. Anyway, so I would say it's playable, but personally not what I would do. So in a game like this, if it didn't offer DLSS, 
I would probably drop down to high settings and let's see if we get playable frame rates if we're at the high settings. Once again, I'm going to reset the average frame rate counter here. All right, now if we're going around at this setting, we are now in the uh, you know upper 40s. Depending on exactly where we go, we might get up, get up into the 50s, that sort of thing. It certainly feels a little bit better, a little bit smoother. Although obviously, you know, could be better. I'd rather be at 60 or above. Let's see what happens if we dropped it down to medium and then we'll make our call for how is the RTX 207070 in a game that doesn't feature DLSS. So we're now at the medium setting. I'm going to reset the frame rate counter once again for the averages. Ah, now we are above 60 frames per second. Feels good. And again, there's other areas of the game that are certainly much, much easier to run than this one. This feels very smooth, very playable. Okay, so what do I make of this? I would say in a graphically demanding game, worst case scenario, as uh, unoptimized as Cyberpunk is and as graphically demanding, the RTX 2070 uh, without DLSS could struggle at ultra settings, is playable at high settings, and feels very smooth at medium settings. So it's going to be up to you if that's good enough for you for your RTX 2070. Uh, for me, I would say that most games that come out aren't going to be this demanding. So I feel pretty good about the fact that I'm going to be able to play any game that is less demanding than this at higher ultra settings. And then a game that is this demanding, if it happens to not have DLSS, I might have to go down to medium. But as you can see, medium still looks pretty dang good in a game that, that, that is this demanding. All right. Now let's look at, OK, what about games that do offer DLSS? So. If we do offer DLSS, let's go back up to the ultra settings. Once again, let's remind ourselves what that looked like here without DLSS. Remember, we were in the low to mid 40s. Without DLSS, it's a little choppier than I would like. It's not the frame rate I'd really be looking for. Now, let's kick on DLSS. And I'll also point out some of the downsides to DLSS, but let's kick that on real quick. Uh, let's do it to the quality settings. So uh, if you're not familiar with DLSS, this lowers the internal rendering resolution of the game and allows an AI machine learning algorithm to try to predict what it would look like at your nat native resolution, effectively increasing your frame rate, but sometimes resulting in some small visual glitches due to the fact that it's actually rendering the game below your native resolution. As far as what types of visual uh, glitches am I talking about? If you look at this street light, if you look at these steps, especially in motion. If you look at these lines in the pavement, you'll notice some aliasing, especially in motion. Uh, that is uh, a DLSS artifact. It's not the only ones you'll show up, and I have a separate video talking about DLSS in Cyberpunk and the little bits of visual glitching that we'll get from it. But overall, you get a massive boost in frame rate. Notice that we are playing at ultra settings, again, no ray tracing, with DLSS on quality setting, You'll notice also that um, if you really do a back-to-back -back comparison, I notice that the image looks softer in this game. Things are a little bit less crisp. Textures feel a little bit less crisp when I have DLSS enabled, in addition to those aliasing issues. Now, overall, this is how I'd play the game. Um, I would play it on the ultra settings with the DLSS on quality. I'll take the small sacrifice in visuals uh, in order to gain that frame rate and keep all the settings turned up. And we're notice that again, on average here, we are uh, around 70 frames per second and uh, rarely dropping below 60. Okay, so in games that feature DLSS, I think we'll be easily able to handle ultra settings with quality DLSS in any foreseeable title. Now let's address what about games that feature ray tracing heavily, such as Cyberpunk 2077. Well, again, that's one of the reasons why I'm using this game to run these tests. Let's see if we can handle ray tracing ultra. Um, and to be clear, it's not at all gonna be playable without DLSS. <laughs> it, uh, the DLSS goes to auto, but what I think, think it's actually selecting is balanced. Again, that's further in, so remember quality reduces your rendering resolution, balance reduces it even further. Let's see what sorts of frame rates we get out of this. Also, we could talk about what do you gain from turning on 
uh, the ray traced reflections. Well, one thing you gain is notice that this this glass here is now actually mirrored to where you're seeing crisp mirrored reflections where you weren't seeing them without ray tracing enabled. Um, also, these shadows are now soft. They have soft edges to the shadows cast by sunlight. That's what your ray traced shadows is doing. Um, and then the ray traced lighting just helps the overall lighting. It's not quite as easy to explain clearly exactly what that's doing, um, which isn't really the point of this video, but I will switch this off again real quick so I can demonstrate the differences. So again, with the ray trace off, notice this now has a hard shadow line. And um, notice that we now have these screen space reflections on this mirrored glass. Uh, notice on some edges, it's really not giving us much reflection at all. Um, and it's definitely not the crisp, uh, clear, mirrored reflection that we had when using the ray traced reflections. But again, with ray tracing off, look at our frame rate. Much, much better. <laughs> okay. So with that ray tracing stuff turned on, once again, let's see how our RTX 2070 is going to fare with ultra ray tracing settings on. Let's give this a moment to process all of those rays. So again, we've got our soft shadows. Um, I'm gonna hit uh, the reset on our benchmarking tool so you can get a good average for how this is running. Again, we've got our crisp, clean, mirrored reflections. Our DLSS is all the way down to balanced. So you're gonna see an increase in the jaggy edges on things. Um, so bear that in mind. And I've got to say, if you played this with a controller and you are happy with 30 frames per second, I mean, good for you. I wouldn't personally do that. So I would say in a game where you want to max out ray tracing at 1440p, um, only if you're happy with a 30 frames per second experience. And that's all I've got to say about that. You could try increasing DLSS down to performance, um, which is going to help out more, but again, introduce an even softer image, a little bit blurrier, even softer textures, even more of these jaggies in on the um, straight line edges. They're much more pronounced. Um, and it still only gets our frame rates. Again, let me, let me redo the averages here. That only gets our frame rates, once again, back into the 40s or so, which is where we could play the game with no DLSS when the ray tracing was turned off. All right, guys, let's see what else we can do here. Um, one other option with ray tracing, though, is you could turn on some ray tracing features, but not all of them, right? So if you want to just have some ray trace shadows, you just want some soft shadows in that case. And once again, let me adjust our DLSS. We could go back to balance, which is honestly the lowest that I would be willing to play on due to the visual trade offs. Um, we are able to have these soft shadows cast by sunlight and still maintain uh, in the 50s or so. Let me hit the uh, reset on our average. We can maintain in the 50s still. So if you want some small amounts of ray traced shadows, getting these soft shadowed edges, once again, if we turn off the ray traced shadows, you can see that, that these are better shadows, right? If I turn off the ray traced shadows, that's noticeably grainier and less nice, right? And then these ones have like the harsh image. So um, yeah, if you're, if you're willing to drop some frame rate for slightly nicer shadows, this is doable. But in, a, in other words, my conclusion is that the RTX 2070 for ray tracing at 1440p uh, is, a, is a mixed bag. You could use a little bit of ray tracing um, and you can only use a lot of ray tracing if you're willing to heavily use DLSS and still have low frame rates in games that are this demanding. Now, let's wrap this up to my final conclusion. Is an RTX 2077, sorry, 2077, geez, 2070 good enough for the year 2021 at 1440p? Well, again, this is gonna depend on your personal preferences and standards, but for me, I would say absolutely yes. I don't think that most games coming out are gonna be this graphically demanding and or poorly optimized. <laughs> um, 
So I think that'll be rare that we'll have games this demanding. And in a game like this, uh, that features DLSS, I think we're just fine at ultra settings and could maybe even use a little bit of ray tracing as long as DLSS is available. In games without DLSS available, if they were still this graphically demanding, we might have to drop down to higher medium. But again, I think it's going to be very rare to run into those cases. And those games will still look very good at higher medium uh, when they're that demanding of <laughs> graphically challenging games. So that's that's my conclusion. I am most likely, unless I find some excellent deal somewhere, going to keep my 2070 for one more year and take a look at what AMD and NVIDIA have to offer next time. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section and have an excellent day.